Hi, this is Tim with Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, uh, I, we'd like some commentary on Bono. People raise him up as this good Christian man, and now recently Bono has hit the news by delaying their album because of Trump's election. U2 has announced the band has delayed the release of their new album, Songs of Experience, due to Donald Trump's victory. Guitarist The Edge told Rolling Stone, We just went, hold on a second, we've got to give ourselves a moment to think about this record and about how it relates to what's going on in the world. The new album now does not have a release date. However, earlier this week, the group announced it will tour this summer to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the album Joshua Tree. About that album, The Edge said, These songs have a new meaning and a new resonance today that they didn't have three years ago, four years ago. You can't argue taste. I would never particularly thought Bono was talented. I never thought U2 was talented. There were better Irish bands such as Thin Lizzy. There were certainly better Irish guitarists than uh, The Edge. For instance, Rory Gallagher was an incredible guitarist from Ireland. A truly amazing guitarist. I never thought they were that good musically, nor cre that creative. A song like Sunday Bloody Sunday about the Derry shootings. Well, John Lennon did a song by the same title. They just mimicked it. They actually mimicked the Beatles by doing a concert on a roof in San Francisco, as the Beatles did on the roof of the Apple building on Salvo Row in London. Um, there was nothing creative about them that ever appealed to me. I just never thought they were that good. Never thought they were good musically or otherwise. But that's a matter of taste. Other people may differ. What disturbs me about him is he has this supposed hip version of Christianity that's not scriptural. I saw him on television wearing sunglasses, using disgusting, filthy, vulgar language. He was talking like an, a total non-believer, which I, he may be a total non-believer just using vulgar, disgusting language. Uh, you know, I don't mean to slip up. He was just routinely talking that way. Uh, not a very good witness for Jesus by any biblical standard. His also emphasis is more of a social gospel than a salvation gospel. It's more social than salvation. Similar to Bob Geldof, it's the humanitarian thing minus repentance and faith through second birth. I don't see him as anything much musically, but that's a matter of taste. My problem is I don't see him as anything much scripturally, and it's disturbing that young people will look to him as in anything. There have been people in the music industry who profess to be Christians, but most of them turn out to be disappointing. Another is Cliff Richards, the uh, Elvis Presley of Great Britain, not well known in America, but certainly well known in Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and so forth. I've met him once at a Christian artist meeting. And again, he says the church has to change its position on same-sex marriage and things like this. Uh, very, very disturbing. Now, a friend of mine who is, again, quite famous in Britain, not well known in America, but famous in Britain, Australia, South Africa, New Zealand, etc., the British Commonwealth countries, is Helen Shapiro, a major pop star from the early 1960s. The Beatles in their first national concert tour of the UK were her opening act. She was the number one female recording artist in the UK at the time. The Beatles were her opening act. Um, it, it, we're going back now to 1962, early 63. Um, she is totally sold out for Jesus. She's a nice Jewish girl, but totally sold out for Yeshua. And she is doctrinally quite solid. And she has discernment. She's on the money. But she'd be an exception. She'd be an exception. Most of the Christians I've met, I can't say much for. I don't really know about Rick Wakeman. I think Joe English from Wings was a believer. Um, I, um, so I'm told, and, and, and I hope he is. Um, was it uh, Terry Lofgren? What's his name from Kansas? Uh, I think he was a believer, and I think he was quite sold out for Christ. I'm not saying that they're, they're not people in that industry. Who, who actually do walk with Jesus. But even the ones who may have had a born-again experience, the law of the world keeps pulling them down and pulling them back. Uh, 
they're generally, most of them, not good witnesses. Most of the ones I know in it are like that. Now, something else, Bob Dylan's Christian albums, his two main Christian albums, were quite good lyrically, and God did use those albums. I urge people to pray for Bob Dylan. I have no doubt that his regeneration was sincere, but he was burned and hurt by the church and by crazy teachings from the vineyard movement and, and by the hypocrisy he saw in it. But don't stop praying for Bob Dylan. I'm quite sure he was indeed regenerate. When he last played in Israel about three to four years ago, he opened with a gospel song in Tel Aviv. Uh, the people I know who know him say he still does believe, but I have no idea where he's really at in his, his walk with the Lord. I, I got saved one block from Dylan's house on McDougal Street in Greenwich Village in New York. He lived at 94 McDougal when I got saved up the block. Always had a love for him. And he, again, his two Christian albums may have been lyrically the two best I've ever heard. So I'm not putting it all down. I'm not saying there's not a blood on the tracks. Or I'm not saying there's not a slow... I mean, a, a, so, sorry, cut that out. I named the wrong album. No problem. No problem. No, I'm not saying there's not a slow train coming. Or there's not a Helen Shapiro. There are. But these are far and few between. Uh, I would not count you two a bono among them. I just don't like the guy. His vulgarity really, really turned me off. He also is a favorite of Rick Warren. Rick Warren is a proven heretic and a proven deceiver, a dangerous man with an antichrist spirit, uh, with his global peace plan. This is the kind of nonsense that Bono buys into. Over the last two years, I've spent a lot of time flying around meeting with Every country we go into, we meet with the government leaders, we meet with the business leaders, and we meet, meet with the pastors. We train the pastors, but we also meet with these other legs of the stool so that they understand they have to bring the church to the table. It isn't going to happen without the church. There's no way it's going to happen without the church. If you can only work with people you agree with, you have just narrowed your army to a very small sliver of humanity. Because not even all Christians agree with you. I don't know if you figured that one out yet. <laughs> when I'm out working on trying to stop AIDS, I'll work with an atheist. I'll work with a gay person. I'll work with somebody who totally disagrees with me. If they want to work on an issue, fine. Why? We're building a bridge. I believe that the average church could teach half the amount and reinforce it and see more life change. Because we're teaching for information, not teaching for transformation. We're teaching for belief, not for behavior. And all over America, people are taking notes and going home and putting their binders away and thinking their life has been changed. It has not. That's why the divorce rate among Christians is almost identical to that of unbelievers. There is a credibility gap. And there's no correlation between what I know and what I do. If we all did what we know, the world would be a different place. The average Christian lives a life no different in lifestyle than a non-believer. And so the Reformation needs to be about what we, what we do, not what we say we do. There's a difference between acceptance and approval. Jesus accepted everyone, even when he didn't approve of their lifestyle. He accepted the woman caught in adultery. You remember? They throw her at her feet. What's the first thing Jesus does with the woman caught in adultery? He defends her publicly. He defends her publicly. He says, who out here, uh, without sin, you cast the first stone. And when they all walk away, in the private conversation of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, now he deals with her sin. But publicly, he protected her dignity. It's more eclecticism than biblical Christianity. We have to unite with people of other faiths who worship other gods to bring in global peace. That's Rick Warren. No Bible-believing Christian in their right mind would have anything to do with that terrible man. But Bono does. But again, what do you expect from Bono? I don't expect anything from him. I've heard enough from him. And I've never really heard him lift up Jesus the way that Bob Dylan did when he was first saved, or the way Helen Shapiro does, I've never heard it. Uh, now, I'm not saying that 
the Lord can't turn his heart. I'm not saying that uh, he's always going to be like that. I don't really know. I don't really know. But I know that up until now, he's nobody I admire, either musically or more importantly, uh, as a figure within the body of Christ, if he is in the body of Christ. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Fash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.